students and families. It's good to be in God's word with you today for this chapel service. Before we begin, I'd like to give you the opportunity to grab a Bible and a hymnal if you have them, and you can look up Matthew chapter 28, and you can look up in the Christian worship, the red hymnal, if you have that uh, hymn 152, and we're going to sing a couple verses of that as well. So you can hit pause and go and get those if you would like. We'll begin as we normally do with our theme passage for the year, and you can say it along with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27, verse 1. And our mission statement as well, making disciples of Jesus Christ through the word and a Christ-centered curriculum. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you like surprises? Some people just love surprises. Others don't really like surprises that much at all. I suppose it depends on what the surprise is. If it's a gift out of the blue or an unexpected party, we'd probably be pretty happy. But if the surprise is the car breaking down, or if there's a sudden death in the family, we'd be pretty upset. Many events surprise us when we least expect it. I mean, a month ago, you probably didn't expect to be watching a chapel video from home. How do you deal with the unexpected? Or when what you do expect doesn't really happen? Easter teaches us to have the right expectations. Let's read about what happened Easter morning from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Mary Magdalene left her home early Sunday to visit Jesus' grave. Along with the other women, she wondered who would roll the huge stone away. She didn't set her expectations very high. Just two days earlier, her hopes and her dreams had crumbled. Her dear friend Jesus was killed on a cross. But an unexpected surprise occurred. The stone was moved. An angel announced that Jesus had risen from the dead. The tomb was empty, and as they were going to tell the disciples, another unexpected surprise, Jesus appeared to them. He said, don't be afraid. What an amazing experience. What expectations can we have from this Easter miracle? Easter morning means resurrection. That is life from death. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead means that he completed his work of salvation for you. And God accepted his sacrifice so that you and I could be declared not guilty of our sins. When we examine our own sinful hearts and lives, we wouldn't expect God to do all of these things that I mentioned. You and I would expect to receive the suffering and death and hell that Jesus went through. You and I would expect a little hope and peace with guilt that's nagging our hurting hearts, just like the women and the disciples on Easter morning. But Easter brings great expectations. 
God gives you his loving forgiveness instead of punishment. He gives you hope instead of despair. He gives you life instead of death. You can expect him to keep his promises. And since Jesus said, I will rise, and he did, you can trust that he had the power to take up his life again. The seal of death is broken, and in its place comes the seal of everlasting life. Christ has been raised. What are you expecting this Easter? It's going to be different, that's for sure. For the first time, or first Easter, I should say, in my ministry, and, and in my 41 years of life, for that matter, God's people won't be gathering in his house to shout, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. And no doubt, you probably don't have family coming that normally get together. And that can be sad, a sad thought. But even though our life situation has changed, God's love, God's promises, and God's comfort have not changed. When you are preoccupied with unexpected troubles or surprises, when you're overcome with doubt and, and despair, maybe over something you've done wrong, when you wonder what the future holds, and, and there's so many things in this world that are uncertain, go to the empty tomb of Jesus. He has revealed his answers to your troubles. You can always expect Jesus to care for you, to comfort you, and to call you his very own. That's no surprise at all. Jesus lives. And you can celebrate that truth no matter where you are and no matter how you worship with your fellow believers this week. Jesus lives. Your victory is won. Like those women and like those disciples, go and tell everybody that you know, in whatever way that you can, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We're going to continue with a song. I know that my Redeemer lives. As I said, it was hymn 152, if you're able. And you might remember this and you might be able to sing along anyway. I know that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my ever-living head. He lives triumphant from the grave. He lives eternally to save. He lives all glorious in the sky. He lives exalted there on high. He lives and grants me daily bread. He lives and I shall conquer death. He lives my mansion to prepare. He lives to bring me safely there. He lives all glory to his name. He lives my Jesus still the same. Oh, the sweet joy this sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. 
And we'll continue with a prayer. Lord Jesus, we praise and thank you for your suffering and death and resurrection. As we meditate on all you have done for us this Holy Week, strengthen our faith through the reading and hearing of your word that all our doubts and fears may be replaced with your comfort and hope. We trust that because you live, we will live forever with you. All praise be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for your saving grace. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God's blessings to you and your family this Easter and always.